Welcome back to another episode of Pushing Back Cars with me, Paul Miller McFadden. I hope you guys are all well out there. I hope you're uh, pushing through. We're in, uh, I can't believe we're in December already. December. Wow, where has the year gone? I'm still just like catching up right in 2023. But then that's the kind of person you're dealing with here. Hey, Mike, how you doing, man? I'm good, Melon. It's definitely uh, one of those, uh, man, that's a good question. Where does the year go? It's already, what to say, the 12th, December 12th, we're recording. So that's right. Yeah, man, it's going fast, but uh, it's getting into that season of like pausing and reflecting on 23, you know? 100%. 100% it is. So I already had one of those conversations today uh, at rehab, just sitting there talking about it, like, man, I can't believe in doing all this stuff and Christmas shopping and, you know, which is good news. You know, speaking of Christmas shopping, for all the guys out there, you know, you have 12 days left until Christmas shopping starts. So you have time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like it. It's good. Yeah. And so how you been? What's been going on in your world? Uh, a, lo- a lot and also a little at the same time, man. Yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah, okay. dude, it's, it's honestly been some of the best weeks the last two weeks i would say just in general have been so nice and you know going back a few episodes with everything and dealing with you know my knee and just kind of life and stressors and like everything man it, it, it's been complete opposite if i'm being 100 percent honest with you melon um mm-hmm. going back to i talked about my experience at church and making a commitment to ultimately let go and submit this is just me submit my life to god and like recommit myself into what i've been doing um uh, it's been a season of letting go um letting go of control expectations anxiety fear uh, all those things that you know were bringing me down and worrying me uh and really just my focus has been on being patient and working on myself and the controllables and just appreciating things more, really stepping into the gratitude area, um, focusing Mm -hmm. on the people that are being put into my life and, and uh, opportunities. Uh, Mm -hmm. They are opportunities, good and bad, or, or, you know, whatever, they're all opportunities. And I just been taking full advantage of them one at a time. And, I just feel happier. I feel lighter. Um, I can feel more confident. Um, and it's just been no matter what the day holds, man, I just wake up happy. Like I know it's not going to last because life is life, but right now life is good. And it's, it's just been easy. That's the best way I can say it. These are some pretty good uh, adjectives to describe how you're going here, letting go of control, anxiety, fears, gratitude, Focusing on the people who have been put into your life, taking advantage of opportunities and feeling confidence. I know that you've, uh, you know, I mean, you had a pretty massive blow, right? Like the the knee, the damage you did to your, your ligaments in your knee and the reconstruction and big impact on your, your work and your physical, your physical self, which is so important in your line of work, in SF work, as everyone can imagine. What's turned it around for you, Mike? Like what has been... There's been a change. Like I, I know you really well, and I, like I know the change we talk a lot often. Yeah, um, but it's pretty apparent. And going from you know, like a, genuinely, like some hard days, we, we've all had them. They are going to come for us all in the future as well. So, what what were some of the key things that led you turning turning this around? Because it's a really, it's a really key uh, point that people might be able to take away. Um, thinking that I was in charge of everything, thinking that I was the center, thinking that I was the focus of everything. Um, meaning that's been a new, that's a new insight or that's a previous way of thinking. Uh, that's a new way, or I'm sorry, th- th- mm. that's an old way of kind of thinking like I was in control of everything and I had the answer for everything. Um, mm. which I, you know, I knew before I didn't but you still want to maintain some control and be like, man, if I don't get this, then it's my fault. I'm a failure. And then you meet, you don't meet expectations and then you're disappointed and then you're depressed, then you're sad. And it's just, 
you're basing your happiness off of other things than just like what you have and, and where you're focusing. Um, and again, we, I've been really positive in the past. And then I had that slump there for, you mm. know, a few weeks with the injury and things compounded, losing your job, your position, um, you know, being by being alone, being by yourself. It's, it's a lot of stuff that builds up, you know, um, you, you said to me the other day, like, Hey mate, my, my cup's full of stress right now. Right. And all these different things. Mm. And that's really what happens, right? Sometimes your cup gets full, sometimes it gets dumped out and, and then you can like breathe and really, you know, just kind of enjoy and smile and just, like, Oh man, I ain't got to carry that anymore. You know? So it's just been this really big, season of letting go like fully letting go just saying oh, man i can't control that you know i can't have these type of expectations for other people because they're my expectations and why do i have anxiety or fear over that you know it's like well it hasn't even happened yet so why am i worrying about something that hasn't even happened yet you know and you go down that that hole man and it's just um that plus a lot of reading lots of prayer um process mm -hmm. um you know, I'm, I'm, I'm back in the gym, which feels great because I'm working on my body again. I'm getting my, you know, mm. I, feel good, I feel good. So just building that back up and having that capability is, is, is nice. Um, and then today, dude, like, honestly, I had a big win, like the, uh, physical trainers that I've had, or, you know, since I've done surgery have just been amazing people. Like, the team is awesome and they're so professional, but they're so fun. Like they make fun of me and push me and stuff like that. It's really, really fun. Um, yeah. but like today, you know, um, I got my brace off. So I finally got my knee straight, uh, after all this time, nine weeks later, uh, if everyone could just picture Forrest Gump with his little <laughs> leg braces. And that was, that was our little mic. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much man. Like, hey, a big old leg brace on one leg. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, stupid, can you hear me, stupid? Take your brace off. You know, throwing rocks at me and yeah. stuff and encouraging me. But uh and the and the and the PTs have been having competitions who can twist you and tie up like a pretzel the most, right? Who can bend that <laughs> yeah, bend your foot back over closer to your butt. It it's always good to lean on other people. There's there's another guy who is post uh, ACL surgery and uh I call him Joker because he deals with pain by laughing. And it's super funny, like when you're just in extreme pain and you hear him laughing over there, then you can't help but laugh while you're in pain. And then we push each other. But, uh, you know, it's, it's been real fun. And um, he pushes me. And today I got to 111 degrees for my uh, reflection, which means bending my knee. Uh, the standard is 120 to be able to go. And I hit 111 today, which is the most it felt like my knee was going to rip off and explode. And, <laughs> and I was, I was screaming on the table and I had to tell him to stop. And that's, a, that takes a lot for me to do. Um, but am I picturing you sort of lying on your face, sort of like on a massage bench and they're pushing your heel back over towards your butt? Yes. Yeah. They, they hold, they lock <laughs> the knee down and then you're laying on their stomach and they're just like, you know, go push, 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 and then relax, let it go, let it go. And then they tell me to push, push, push. And I'm just gripping the table, dude. I'm literally sweating. I'm literally yeah. sweating on the table. What's it's, a normal? What's a normal healthy range of motion? 120 degrees by the book. That's a that's a normal person. Yeah, like, wow. He's, uh, when you're telling me 111, I was like, wow. You know, you still got a long way to go, but that's that's pretty close then. Yeah, like a healthy knee, you could do like 130, 140 ish, mm -hmm. but a standard like you can walk straight and everything's fine is 120 degrees. So. Yeah, yeah. I went from last Monday from 94 degrees to 111 and I have nine, nine degrees ish left to get to there. Right. So. Wow. Well, that's massive progress. So what I was hearing there was um, you had an old way of thinking about being in control and having to have all the answers. And in that state, your happiness is given to you by the external things and the change occurred for you when you were letting go of expectations letting go of future-based thinking letting go of reflect uh you, you began reflecting and you got back in the gym and we've often talked about that physiology driving your psychology that the body drives drives the mind and the mind drives the body yeah and as well as that letting go you also had more leaning on other people so that sounds like a pretty healthy little cheat sheet for those who are going through hard times right there yeah it's literally the list that, that i go man because 
if I think I can do all of this by myself, like I can't even imagine doing all this by myself <laughs> because it's hard now with relying on all the things that you just mentioned. And it's the only way forward to get through this. Um, that's been like my thing in my head is like, there's only, there's only one way through it and it's through it, but how I choose to get mm. through it, I have control over that. And I do need all those things. Love it. Love it. So do I. That's why, you know, that's why I said it. You know, I, I don't, I never lie. I never put out dumb shit. I don't, I don't, I don't you know, I'm not like, uh, I'm not like Raph, you know, occasionally just throw that <laughs> stuff on there, you know, which I talked to him. Raph says hi, by the way. He was out at the beach in California with his son playing on the beach. And I told him to get wet and sandy and, uh, turn his son and Soren into a sugar cookie. And he goes, nah, <laughs> Soren doesn't want to do that. And I go, Oh, he doesn't like hard, hard stuff. Uh, he's definitely going to be a future pilot. So. Wow. Why well, they start an early with a sledging. <laughs> it could just be that that child has evolved to walk around just naked in the snow and he doesn't like the heat. It could be his mum's side of the family, the blood coming through. Probably so. A little bit of obs in there. Yeah. But, uh, so for, for the listeners, I've probably read the uh, topic and the title and so on on the show notes here, but clearly we're, we're doing an episode now about managing stress. And we just got a great little, you know, 101 tutorial there from a pretty senior SF guy on, with a, a heavy uh, background, a lot of experience. We'll give a, a short little brief there about shifting out of an old thinking and new thinking and uh, a couple of great points. So where did you want to take the conversation now, Mark? Managing stress. So there's been a lot of stress, obviously, within. If you're listening to this, you have stress in your life. We all do. Mm -hmm. Melon and I have been talking. We talked yesterday and I'm going to drive home just about some things. You know, Melon's going through a big transition point in his life. Um, I'm going through a transition point in my life dealing with injury and a bunch of other things like that. Um, and ultimately, anytime one big thing happens, other things are affected, which can multiply the stress and really put you um, sometimes into a downward spiral. Right. Let's 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 be honest. Um, mm -hmm. So some of the things that we're going to talk about, uh, I came up with some questions uh, to help kind of facilitate this. And uh, th these are some questions for you out there for the listeners. And, you know, just get a piece of paper and write it down or just follow along and, and listen to us and maybe talk to yourself while you're driving in your car or sitting at home or at the office. And uh, these are these are just general things you can kind of ask yourself either daily or throughout the week and how you're doing stuff, not just getting lost in the sauce because uh, you're busy because we're all busy. Uh, but you got to stop and like really evaluate some of these stressors. So, um, Melon, if you want to give some context real quick, maybe like some of the stuff you're dealing with. And then uh, I'll get into these questions. Yeah, I mean, the plate's pretty full. Work is is pretty full. I'm in a reasonably senior role uh, at work. And there's just always a lot of uh, time-based pressures to deliver, which I'm sure many more, probably all uh, listeners can relate to. You know, there's never enough resources and there's always a time constraint to get stuff done. And there's that end-of-year goal, which, which a lot of uh, industries have. And so that's been... Uh, work's been a lot. I've been away a lot for work, you know, sort of 50% of the time away from the family. So that's a work side. Family side, the family are actually um, moving back to Australia. So the kids are going back. Cherry's going to get them uh, situated there. So we're looking at, a, you know, a couple of months apart at a time uh, out into the, the new year. So that's going to be a, a major, that's a really big change. Uh, also on the family side, um, Cherry sadly lost her father uh, just a bit over a month ago now, month and a half. So that's another significant one. Um, we're we're trying to build an investment property. It's been it's been a journey. I got to tell you, with uh, interest rates and construction costs and cost of contractors and materials and everything else all going through the roof. So it's been a bit of a journey uh, and pressures there. The standard stuff that a lot of um, a lot of parents feel just that pressure to provide resources for the for the kids for the family, um, you know, in our situation on the prime breadwinner. So that's that's like a, a burden 
that I carry, I carry willingly. That that's that's really an important part of my my role in the family. Um, so always is sort of a constant thing there, just to make sure that the lights stay on and the you know there's food on the table. What have I, what have I left out? <laughs> is Good that stuff. it? Is that it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cost of setting up, cost of setting up a family home back in Australia. Like, there's just there's a lot of stuff. International international travel is stressful, you know. Let alone international move, and um, looking at a prospect of six to twelve months on my own out here, um, just to to make all those other life goals and finances sort of work. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot, you know. It's a lot. That is a lot. Um, well, I'll lead into the first question I got for you. I mean, there, there's the kind of the background. I mean, and you kind of know mine dealing just with like getting healthy, being able to walk again. Um, you know, I can't do a lot of things that I want to do, but, mm. you know, I professional have professional impacts, professional impacts on you, on you in your chosen career from that physical issue, you know? So there's like a big professional overhang. Without. Yeah. Yeah. There were... So this is this is for all the listeners, this is <laughs> we just talk about what's happening in our lives, you know. And and we don't script it. And it was like we're gonna talk about what's actually going on for us and, yeah. and how we're trying to how we're trying to manage. So we'll kick it off with a question. Um, Melon, how often do you experience stress? And if you were to categorize on a scale from one to ten, what levels would they be? And we're talking about like daily, you know, like you wake up every day on average. Oh, do you know, it's funny, right? I will say, I think Cherry and I have developed a bit of a superpower with um, stress and stress management, given our really close brushes with um, mortality that we had with Annie, our daughter, when she was a super prem baby. We just had so many near death experiences at that time. And we got very, very good at living in the present moment and not not bringing future stress into the present moment. It's just like an act, an actual discipline that you can engage in. And that came again uh, when Cherry had cancer in 2012. And you know that it, we're both really good at it. We're really, really good at it. We're good at. We've got something coming. Right? When's the next action or decision point? Or when's the next? You know inflection going to occur in this area in life and they'd be like right is there anything we can do in between no okay open the drawer put the thing in it shut the drawer and get really close to actually forgetting about it as it's like a conscious thing um most of the time my stress levels are pretty low to to be 100 percent honest with you you know but they can aggregate you know it's when things add up you get that additive nature Sure. Of having a lot of a lot of stuff going on at the same time, you know that sense that I said to you, you know, my cup's pretty full at the moment. It's not a feeling I normally have, but I, I have noticed, Mike, I'm not sleeping that well. So, you know, waking in the night and thinking, especially when I'm away, you know, when I, I know I've got a very early wake up and I'm I'm sleeping in a demountable, um, you know, it's always just a bit unusual. I, I never quite relax the way I do at home. Yeah, I'm sure many of our listeners can relate to that. So, you know, a couple of hours awake in the night, waking up and one of those things very hard to keep your head totally clear, as probably many, many of us know at 2 a.m. when your eyes spring open and you, you've got a lot going on. Um, that's probably the time that I feel it the most, I'd say, would be just the impacts on sleep, specifically when I'm awake. Sure. So my day-to-day, my day-to-day stress, Mike, I'd say would be like a, my normal day-to-day stress level, even with all this going on, would probably be around like a three or four. But recently, it's been building up a little bit just as we're getting closer to the actual departure dates and some critical decision times with you know this construction uh, project that I've got and so on. So I'd say it's picked up a lot, and for me to say it's over over five is a lot. You know, I don't I don't really suffer effects of stress very much. Mm-hmm. So things are things got to be pretty grim for me to to tip over five. So I'd say I've been sitting probably on about a six in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Well, I, I like how you said. You know, it's just like they it can be magnified. Or like it's a bunch of things that add up quickly. Like oh, that's just a small thing, and that's a small thing, and that's a small thing. And you write them off as small things, but when they're all three of all three require your attention, 
uh, whether mm. it requires correction or management or something like that, you're going, you're getting pulled three different directions, right? And how many of us are good at that? To, and especially if you're maintaining it over time, probably not that many. It's, it's pretty hard to do. Right. And Mel, and listening to your situation, dude, you got a lot of like, they're not level ones. I would say you got a bunch of like level fours and fives that require a lot of attention with moving, with building, with work and traveling and like, you know, all that sort of stuff, man. Like that, that that's a lot. Um, yeah. It is. I've, I've personally never looked at my stress levels and, and wrote them down and be like, is this a one or a 10? And from what it sounds yeah. like to you is like, you know, dealing with Annie and like the near death experiences, that's a 10, like no question. That's a 10. Um, a one in my yeah. mind would be like, uh, I don't know, like, man, I got to go fill up gas and I'm almost running out on E, you know, or something like it's like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone cut you off in traffic. Yeah, it's something small. Day like, to day. Yeah, day to day, like, oh, I'm probably going to experience this. That's eh, a level one type thing. Um, you know, for myself, I would say, you know, I'm probably dealing with, you know, my knee, which is probably about a seven, just. Literally, that's yeah. my job every day is to go in and grind yeah. for two, three hours and just beat the crap out of my knee to get it back. Um, professional is like, I don't, I still don't know what's going to happen to me in the future with my job or my position or what's going to happen to me. Um, everything I thought it was going to be is gone. Uh, so there's that. And then like personal life, like the holidays are coming up, you know, I'm by myself and traveling and driving. I got to drive 10 hours to go home to Pennsylvania and do all this different stuff. And, you know, it, it's, it's a lot for me, especially not being as mobile as I'd like to be. Um, Christmas shopping, you know, it's that time of year. Like I said, I still got 12 days before I can start. So plenty of time, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it's just that it, it's a lot, especially at the end of the year, you know, and everything's kind of that, that chaos is ensuing, especially if you got children and family and, well, where are we going for dinner? And where, where is this going? And what do my kids need? And what's this? And, you know, it's, it's a lot of stuff. So I never heard of it that way, but I think it's good to evaluate yourself and be like, yeah, I'm dealing with a lot of level ones today. And how can I deal with that versus dealing with, hey, I got five, seven, nine, maybe a 10 floating mm -hmm. in there. And then ask yourself, mm -hmm. be like, can I deal with this, you know, on my own? And then also, what am I doing to uh, handle it? You know, what are your procedures, which um, we'll, we'll kind of get into in one of the questions I got. Yeah. Um, the next question I got for you is, do you ever pause and categorize whether the stress is internal or external, like where it's coming from? So is it coming from inside you mm. in, your, in your head or is it actually coming from an external source? Um, and if you do that, how does it help you? Internal, external. I think I really break it down into that Stephen Covey circle of influence, circle of concern, which is a little bit similar. And for me, it's the stuff that you can impact and the stuff you can't. And when when I when I get clear on the boundary and I'm able to categorize something as, hey, this is something I can't control. This is not inside my circle of concern. That's where I release it, and I do have a. I know I have a marked decline in my, you know, reduction in that stress feeling when I've been able to say, all right, this is not something I can, I can impact. Therefore I don't have to worry about it now as yeah. a, as a, as an active, as an active, um, a categorization thing that that's the one that I use the most, which is it's the circle of concern, circle of influence. Can I impact this? Can I, can I change it myself now? Can I change it over time? Yes or no. Right, put my energy, pour my energy into it, like full force, if I can, and if I can't, just really move on. You know, there might be people, like there could be people at work who are just an immovable force. And that's like, don't rage about it. Just, just take the wind out of their sails by doing everything they need done the way they need it done, and move on. Do you know what I mean? If they're in a position of authority, for example. Yeah. Is a way that I will, will uh, deal with those kind of stresses more. Okay. Well, I, I look at it as, you know, 
be, being blatantly honest, a lot of the time, and I talked about the fear and anxiety, mm. that's an internal for me. Like, yeah, that's my mind and, and my, you know, my mind, my heart, and my soul. That's me getting worked up over something. Usually because one, I'm either scared, um, scared that I can't handle it. So my uh, preparedness to deal with something or lack thereof, I should say, is yeah. that scares me because I don't know if I can deal with that. I don't know if I can do it. And that's when my own head starts spinning of like, that's going to suck. That's going to be painful. That's not going to be comfortable. Right. And then I allow that to start like growing inside of me and it starts controlling my actions or what I say or how I do stuff. Um, so I look at it that way as being like internal external would be, you know, my, my asshole neighbor just constantly bl blast music at 11 o'clock at night and I can't sleep. And, you know, I'm rolling back and forth. And it's like, well, shit, <laughs> that's, I know I'm not doing it. I, I'm doing everything right. I'm doing everything that I possibly can, but there's external things that just keep pushing. Right. Um, it could be that it could be financial stuff of like, mm. you know, somebody needs money from you or going about that, or you're dealing with paying the bills, especially this time of year with gifts and, you know, expectations of other people of you, that's an external thing. Um, and trying to deal with that. Um, but it, it does, because I think it goes along back to what you said is like, can I control it? Can I not control it? Um, mm. And recently, like I said, I've been really letting go of the things I can't control. I think sometimes yeah. sometimes I think I can, but I really break it down and be like, look, is this something that I can honestly control? Can I say something and fix it? No. Is it something that I can physically touch or do that'll fix it? No. It's like, then why am I getting worried about it, man? Like I'm doing, I'm doing everything right. I'm doing what I can do. I know where my heart is. I know where my mind is or my thoughts or Mm. Um, my actions why am i getting so worked up about something i can't control and then just let it go you know um really letting it go like this you know go ahead this, this goes this stuff goes back to marcus aurelius you know the stoic emperor that we've referred to before um, amazing guys the uh the old emperor at the start of the movie gladiator is based on marcus aurelius yeah. He's the one who started this stuff, like looking and distinguishing what you can control and what you can't and make sure you're putting energy only into the stuff you can control. Like it's just, you know, complaining about the weather is is <laughs> is a classic, right? Or taxes, like there's just stuff that you're not going to do anything about and putting energy in that stuff. You know that, I don't know if people heard the, the book, um, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. It's like <laughs> reserve the fucks. Like don't just hand them out willy-nilly. You've only got a certain number of them. So save them for the stuff that matters and then go all in. Do you know what I mean? Keep those fucks in your pocket. Don't throw them away at the <laughs> chick who's cutting in front of you at the shopping center. Let it go. <laughs> Is, are you talking about a personal experience there, Melon? <laughs> ah, maybe I am. Maybe I am. <laughs> Smile and wave. Smile and wave. How fucking dare you take, take, <laughs> take the beer that I was about to buy? <laughs> well, there you go. Look Here at you Mike. go. I got a six pack of fucks just for you. <laughs> Chesa loves his Australian accent, but no one else does. I'm getting better, but I know I'm. Better. <laughs> <laughs> but like that, that that is that is a key thing. That what can you control and what can't you control? And and there's just a huge amount of wasted energy. Like if it is if it's one percent outside your circle of influence, you're just wasting. You're absolutely wasting energy. You're wasting time. And yes, your circle of influence shrinks. Like if you're one of those people complaining about stuff all the time at work or in your, your personal life, you know, in your romantic uh, relationship, for example, the other person listens to you less. Like your, your ability to influence them goes down. Yes. You know, the coworkers are like, they've got, they're, they're sick of it. Whereas if you're someone who just keeps your mouth shut, focuses on the stuff you can, gets on with it, delivers great work all the time or, you're in the relationship and you're engaged, you're, you're putting in where you can, you're not moaning about stuff that's beyond your control. Like the other person listens to you differently. Yes. And it's just, it's it's a truth. So there's a lot of power in that. And I, and I, I really heard you like expressing that at the start of the show here, Mike, which is really good. Hmm. Well, um, yeah, so 
the next part of this, you know, the next question I got for you, and so you understand the stressors, right? You understand if they're internal or external, whether you can control them or not, um, and whether you're even experiencing stress and what kind of it, right? So the next mm -hmm. question I got for you is when and where do you feel most relaxed or comfortable? Like <sighs> a physical place, a mental place, like where where is that for you? So like when I get home, I do, like I just came home today, like coming in, it's it's so nice here. Come home, the house, it's an it's an oasis of calm. This place, I'm so blessed with the person I'm married. She just like brings order to the universe. So I love coming home, and um, I sleep well. You know, the kids are here. I just absolutely love it. The thing is, I know that that's it's not going to be there. <laughs> So coming home, like everything's been packed, you know, like the house is in, in boxes and we're at that state, you know, so that there's like a bit of disruption based on that, you know, like Cherry's apologizing to me. I'm like, babe, I totally get it. The house has to be packed. And she's doing it to save me the hassle down the track, you know, in months to come. So typically though, coming home is is a like, a, I love it. I absolutely love it. You know, the car pulls in the driveway and I'm just like, it's happy days, right? Yeah. The other place, the other place where I really get a lot of my stress out, Mike, is in the gym. You know, we always talk, or I always talk the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and all of those are areas where you can build up stress or you can work stress out. And for me, physical has always been an outlet. Um, you know, in the last six months I've done my best to get back in shape quite a bit, you know, I dropped dropped quite a bit of weight and got back to the gym. And that has been really key, you know. So the physical element for me covers your your exercise, your sleep, which unfortunately for me is just I'm just struggling with it when I'm away. But exercise, sleep, hydration, and nutrition. So what you eat, what you drink, how you're sleeping, and how you're exercising, and that for me constitutes physical. And you can be doing stuff to make your physical body more or less stressed. Mm -hmm. And I know I always. I always, when I've hit the gym, like I come out and I've got, I've just got clarity. I've not thought about my problems while I've been in there. You know, you burn off some of that cortisol and adrenaline. I think when you're in there, and it certainly has been an absolute key for me. So those are, gym. yeah, yeah, those are big. Um, I would say mine is when I'm not consuming social media. Yes. Um, you know, you said what you, what you eat and how you sleep is very important, but also what you consume, not just mm. nutrition wise, what you're feeding your brain, what you're feeding your soul, what you're feeding your heart. I like it. Um, looking around, you know, are you constantly looking at, you know, just mindless shit, little 15 second videos? Are you watching movies about death and, you know, cheating and relationships failing and whatever? Or are you feeling your you know, your, your cup with hope and faith and, mm. and goodness of other people of examples that are out there, because let's face it, the media is so negative, like, like not just social media, but the news and everything else, it's constantly in a negative light and negative light. And the more people that you watch consume that, like, you don't like to hang around those people because they're so like the world's fucking broken and this is bad. And these people are evil and that's evil and this is bad. And it's like the separation It's like, man, I just got home from a 12 hour work day and I just wanted to ask how you were doing, <laughs> you know, like, I don't want to <laughs> yeah. hear about all that shit. I, I, I agree fully with you, Mike. I, I've found recently that I'm like phone in hand. What am I doing here? You know? the old doom scrolling I've heard it described as and and a technique that I've been using to break that is just put a, put a podcast on immediately just like put on a podcast something positive put the phone down whether I'm exercising or whether I'm doing some work at a desk I'm just able to then focus and get on back on what with what I was doing yeah like they are they are a source of they're a very powerful tool I think and you know we can use them the way you and I have to maintain a relationship over such a, a long distance across the earth. Like it's an amazing year to live in with these digital devices. And, you know, I love connecting with my mom, having an amazing chat with her once a week. And I'm just so grateful for, for what these things can do. Plus uh, podcasts, I think are just awesome. The ability to hear conversations and listen to people, you know, 
talk about meaningful topics, I think it's just an absolute blessing. And I've just been like, right, that that's my that's the stuff that I know lifts me and it reduces my stress. Yeah. And um, I agree with you fully about that. That's a really good one to add to the consumption, not just food, hydration, but also social media. I think that's excellent. Yeah, yeah. Um, you started to get into it, and which is my final question for this. Um, you know, you said when you come home and the mm-hmm. gym for you, mine was like being productive when I get home and like paying attention to what I'm looking at or where I'm giving my time and energy. If it's giving me good stuff, like, or mm-hmm. if it's just mind mindless, you know, white noise that's going into me and distracting me from what I should be doing. Um, what is, what are the processes that you have to go through in order to feel that feeling when you get home? Like, I know you said, like, Ch- you come home and Ches is packing that and food's made and whatever else, but then go past that. What mm-hmm. is it about home and what work have you guys had to put in to make it feel mm-hmm. like I can come home and just release? I don't have to worry. I don't have to... Mm-hmm be nervous i don't have to be fearful to go home when i leave work you know like or or go yeah. to the gym like what where is that at and what have you what have you guys done yeah yeah excellent question so i i really there's like um the tony robbins talk about some of the um, prime human needs and there's a need for routine and a need for novelty and they're mm-hmm. sort of slightly higher and lower in each each person some people they're not always like moving opposites you know um but we've been really deliberate the whole time since the children were born. So 16, nearly 17 years now in really having a lot of routine in the home. And and we're really firm believers. The longer we're, we've been practicing this, the more evidence we see for the fact that this is a, like a foundation you can then boost off into life. When you've got like a really strong routine, you've got this, you know, you work through the same stuff uh, day in, day out but that gives you like a place of calm to come back to, you know, your bloody Superman and his castle of solitude or whatever it's called at the North Pole. You're back in your home. It's neat. It's organized. Um, and the routine that has, I've seen the kids, you know, like Michael gets up in the morning, makes his bed clean. He's, it's unbelievable for a 15 year old, how clean his room is. Does yeah. his stretch, does a little stretching circuit in the morning and then, gets on with his morning routine and gets to school and stuff. And I know that that is a direct result of how Cherry set up the home and her conversations with me and, and, and how we've deliberately and intentionally worked to set our life up. So there's a lot of stuff that's been happening in the background. So one of the things I know when I come in, the kids know that there's going to be like hugs and that, you know, there's going to be a reconnection and I'll give everyone the tip for talking to teenagers. Like you have to start when they're little and you can't be like, how was your day? Like, this is <laughs> this is the, the biggest trap to fall into with kids. And like I found that a long time ago. And so the kids know I always ask them, like, what was the best thing in your day? What was the best thing this week? Hmm. And I just get it, like it is just a great place to start a conversation. Like it's much, it's much more intentional than you know, how are you? You know, what was the best thing this week? And yeah. then, I, like, I just I had a great conversation with Annie about, you know, it's the last week of school for her, and she's really excited about travel, obviously, but she's really enjoying that. And Michael with his study, and he's got some preparing for exams uh, with his classes, you know, science and English and history and maths and stuff, and talked to him about techniques and tips I have for memorization that I use for teaching pilots for him to memorize stuff for exams. So it's just a, like a great way to, ha- it's like a routine engagement that we've practiced and I've practiced and practiced and practiced over this last year and a half of working remotely of having like a system of engagement like I give Cherry the, the ETA pretty accurately off Google Maps on when I'm going to be home yeah um, so she's got a good heads up and the house is sorted and I come in and just the kids know that there's going to be this because it's the same every time and I think that there's then a lot of freedom to maneuver that's given by sort of some boundaries especially for, for teenagers but even for me, like that routine creates the calm, creates the expectation. And then, you know, Cherry and I go and I find like we're going to, there's a big uh, music festival on here this weekend, Middle Beast. And unexpectedly, Metallica is coming. <laughs> so we'd, already, we'd, already, we'd already bought tickets and they were, they were like, yeah, and Metallica is also coming. So, wow. 
So like we have heaps of fun as well. Like it's not like come home, put on the cardigan and I don't know, do the knitting in front of the fireplace. <laughs> but but the routine, the routine creates like the calm and the order and then you can you can push on and ha- you can push off that and have fun and know you can come back. Yeah. Um, gr- dude, I love these questions because <laughs> listeners, if you just listen to Melon, he just tapped into a state that he wasn't even in before when he was like, yeah, I like to go home and go to the gym. This is the whole other layer to explore. And yeah. if, you, if you can see Melon, he's moving his hands in front of his chest because it's flowing out of him about how he feels and what... Mm. How like how it feels to come home, right? What makes that feeling happen? It doesn't just happen. You have to manifest it. You just put in some work mm. and address some things. But I think at one point or another, we've all had times when we're leaving work or whatever. And it's like, I don't want to go home right now. Why? Because it's like a prison because it's uncomfortable because I know there's a fight. Mm. coming. I know there's something I have to deal with. And you're never really like leaving the stress. You're never really leaving work. You're going home to do more work. And you know, I know that is a shit feeling, right? So mm. going to layer past. Like I've been there. I've been there too. Like, don't don't get me wrong. This is all sure the result of a lot of work, and there's been there's been ups and downs along the way. Yeah, like I've been there as well. I've been there as well, though, Mike, with those hard times. One thing, one thing that I like is understanding. Like, the home is is peace for me. I want it to be home. Um, and, and let me be clear. Um, whether I'm by myself like I am now or I have a partner and I'm with somebody home is a reflection of your life and and I really believe this it's a reflection of your life the role you serve where your priorities are and your character if you go to someone's house and it's just a complete mess and there's boxes everywhere and the trash hasn't been taken out and there's dishes piled up like whatever they're probably going through something, right? And it's a reflection of like, you're very disorganized, you're sloppy, you don't really care, you don't take pride in certain stuff, right? And I always talk about this with my friends, but, you know, we're always worried about the external stuff, like, who's the president? Who's in this? Well, this (laughs) this is happening, whatever. Start at your own home. Like, you can control your home, start changing the world at home, and yeah. clean your house. Have the conversation with the government of your own house. You know, like mm. you expect somebody up in the White House or wherever you're at to step in and fix your problems. It's like start in your own house, like create your own home, like your own country or however you want to do it and start making yeah. changes there. Um, and, and have, have the difficult ha- have the difficult conversation with your wife or your partner, that thing that you've been putting off. That, that feeling of dread, like there, there, there can be a breakthrough on the other side of that breakdown. It can be an amazing new place you can take a relationship to if you're willing to sort of, as we say, square your shoulders to the enemy and just yeah, take it on. Like you're saying there, like you, you, it all starts in the home for sure. It does. Yeah, and and you know what? The only way to deal with stressors is to address them, not to ignore them. Right? Ultimately, like. You got a thorn stuck in you. You're not just going to ignore it. And it's like, ah, oh, this is going to fall out and go away. It's three mm-hmm. inches deep in me. It's like, no, you, you need to address it. Otherwise, it's never going to go away and heal right. Um, and then the last part that I got, no matter what it is, and I know we're going to wrap up here soon, but start your day and end your day with gratitude. Either yes. if you're by yourself or with your family or a partner. E- every morning I practice I, I walk outside, I'm walking down outside to get my truck and I pause, I look at the sky, I take a look around, take a few deep breaths. And when I say my prayer every morning and I'm thankful just to like have what I have, I have a, I have a nice truck. I have a decent you know place to live. I had heat this morning. I ate this morning, you know, mm. like there's so many people out there that don't have that. Right. And, and the, if you wake up feeling, well, I don't have this, but I'm living spoiledly especially in the Western culture, it's like you're already starting your day off wrong, man. Cause now you're never going to be happy no matter what you get throughout the day. Um, yeah. Ending your day, it could either be coming home from work or before you go to bed. If you're alone, pat yourself on the back, give yourself some gratitude to be like, you did a really good job today. You got a lot accomplished today. You clean mm-hmm. the house today. You, you, you addressed what you've been fearing today, you know, Give yourself gratitude for being able to go and do mm. things. 
And also if you're with somebody, if you're laying next to your, to your husband or wife or your, your children, like Melon said, be very specific. Don't just be like, glad you had a good day or, Hey, I appreciate you. Find something and make it a point to tell them, Hey, I just want to let you know, I appreciate you cleaning the house today. It looks wonderful. I appreciate you going out to get your hair and nails done. And you looked extra beautiful for me today. I appreciate all the hard work that you did at, you know, rugby or, at, at school mm. today or whatever you did I, like i'm very proud of you you know i'm I'm grateful for that be very point yeah. specific and go to bed and wake up with that same energy as, mu as much as possible and when you come home you know that it's a, a place of appreciation it's a place of teamwork being there for one yeah. another gratitude um you know all those things and stresses can't be held or dealt with alone all the time, especially. And you gotta, you gotta lean on other people and who better than like your family or your partner or your, or your best friends, whoever's there for you. Absolutely. love that, Mike. I'll, I'll add that there's another really big element. Cause I think the great, you know, we've got the physical, we talked about exercise, sleep, hydration, diet, social media consumption. There's mental for me. There's a bit of uh, this is just going to quick bullet points here about stress, mental mindfulness, so getting yourself in the present moment is a real part of the mental element. Um, breaking down your goals into like to-do lists and stuff. That's another one. Get yourself some momentum pathway uh, towards your goals. Emotional, getting the emotional side of your life, communicating with your network. So Mike and I just have an amazing rapport and now I can share anything with him. You know, I've got a bunch of super close friends. Uh, top of the list there would be my mate Dalla. I've known him for 26 years and clearly Cherry, you know, I just share everything with her. So comms in your network is like that emotional health and stress. It's going to just lower it. And then I had gratitude under spiritual, Mike. So the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, I had gratitude and acknowledgement is like letting a person know what it is that you're grateful for, for, the, for them, something specific. And the top of the list in spiritual for me is uh, your purpose. So reestablish it. If, you, if you've lost a bit of clarity about what it is, reconnect with it. If you know what it is, redefine it if you need to. Hmm. But that purpose is going to be something that's going to pull you forward. It's going to clarify all of your goals. And this is why I probably describe myself as a stress six um, out of 10, despite sort of a significant uh, list of challenges at the moment is I'm really, really clear about what I'm doing and what I'm doing over the next six to 12 months. And like you just said, like I've got teamwork in the home, the whole family know we're all pulling in the same direction on that same uh, purpose. Hmm. Solid, right? Man, it's, it's everything's going to be easy right now, right? <laughs> we just do these things. Well, it takes discipline. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Then you got to, then you got to Nike. You got to Nike at everybody. You got to just do it. You got to get an action. <laughs> Thinking the thoughts. And yeah, 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 they're all great thoughts. That's not going to cut the mustard. You got to, you got to do this stuff. But you can, you can address the stress. You can manage it, and you can move forward. Absolutely, can. Thoughts, thoughts are just thoughts without action, right? Yep. Yeah. And if you don't know how to act, find somebody who does and ask the question and put your pride and ego aside and say you need some help. It's not the end of the world. Boom. Boom. So, yeah, love it. So, well, just a little recap there. Uh, some of these questions are asked, you know, for the listeners out there, if you want to go through and review, but, you know, sit down with a piece of paper, either yourself or maybe with your family, it could be coworkers, it could be your kids, like whatever. Um, going through, how often do you experience stress and at what levels? Maybe do the one to 10 scale, or if you got something else that you'd like to create, get creative and use it. Uh, do you ever pause and categorize internal or external stressors or what Mellon said, what I can and cannot control? And how does that help if you can look at things and understand, well, I can or cannot control that, or is that me or something else creating it? Um, it'll kind of help you out. Uh, when and where do you feel most relaxed? You know, Mellon's got home in the gym. I feel the home as well, but also, uh, I feel re most relaxed when my mind is calm and, and, and balanced. Um, then I can go anywhere. It doesn't matter from home and the gym at work, as long as my internal stuff is, is balanced, I'm balanced. 
Um, so ask yourself that. And then what's the process you need to take to get there? What thing needs to be addressed? What things, what conversations do you need to have? What actions do you need to take? Map it out, have those discussions, do the uncomfortable stuff, change some things around in your place, reorganize. Um, it's all part of it, right? Nothing stays the same forever. Everything has a time to change and, and evolve and adapt to our ever evolving world. So take those four questions, write them down, send us your responses. If you want to talk about them or share them with others, that'd be great. We'd be interested to hear about how people deal with stress and what you're doing out there, where your places are and some different techniques because me and Melon, we don't know shit, but we try. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> You got anything for closing, Matt, Melon? No, I just, you know, I break it always down to the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. Spiritual is always number one purpose for me. And yeah, the other stuff, you know, be sensible and uh, get into action in those other areas. Right on, man. Well, hey, we, uh, we just, we have probably one more episode come out uh, in and around Christmas time if we can, but uh, for those out there that are so celebrating, I think Hanukkah is going on right now. So happy Hanukkah to any listeners that are out happy there. Happy Hanukkah. And uh, we hope you're all enjoying the Christmas season. Really, don't take our advice. Get out shopping immediately. Immediately. <laughs> it's drastic. And if you're waiting, you're you're not going to make it through this year. And then you'll have real stress from your significant other. Make sure you got her, him or her the right gift. Um, stay away from the orange Gatorade or the brown Gatorade as much as possible. <laughs> And uh, make 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 good decisions. <laughs> Love it. Love it. And safe travels. Safe travels for those going to be traveling at Christmas time and uh, over the holidays. And and Merry Christmas, everybody. We'll speak soon. I've been getting I've been getting Merry Christmas already for a couple of weeks. Every time I come in the door, my daughter's like, Merry Christmas, Dad. And it's like, love it. That child loves Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So until next time, guys, take care. Uh, think on these. If you've got any tips for us about stress, we'd love to hear them. And uh, otherwise, see you next week.